Greetings, Apostle uh, Lloyd Kangara here speaking. I want to welcome you to this uh, session. This is our second session on the subject of spiritual growth. The first session I, I was uh, coming live, but today I thought I should record so that you could do watch this message at your own time. Okay, so we are, we are dealing with the subject of spiritual growth. And uh, our first session was dealing with uh, basically laying down the foundation about spiritual growth. Okay, so we managed to, to talk about the foundation, which is the salvation. And uh, we, we, we're going to continue to discuss this matter. What I want you to see is that um, um, salvation marks the beginning. And uh, every everything that is born needs to grow. Everything that is born needs to grow. So when a, a newborn baby is uh, is born, the next thing that is expected is for the baby to grow in every sense. And uh, this takes uh, what the baby feeds on. This takes uh, taking care of the baby in many other ways. So the same applies to our, our, our spiritual growth. Um, let me just start by pointing out that man is a tripodite being. And uh, I mean, man is a spirit. Man has got a soul and lives in a body. So when you get born again, what really happens is that the, the real you, the spirit man, uh, gets born again. That means is regenerated. The regeneration of your what? Of your, of your spiritual man. You get born again. But there comes also to play the soul and the, and the body like we, we discussed earlier on that these are going to be subjected to the word. The soul needs salvation by the word, by our devotion. As we take the word of God, we are receiving salvation of the soul. The body has to be subjected or has to be brought to submission to the will of God or to the word of God. All right, I want us to start reading, uh, to start on 1 Thessalonians chapter chapter 5. I'm going to read here from verse, um, um, verse 23. It goes here and says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take note of that. He's talking about your whole spirit, your soul, and your body. So man is a tripartite being. So I want you to understand, when we're talking of spiritual growth, we are involving the three. We are involving the three. The, when you're born again, your, your, your inner man, the real you, is regenerated. But that is to the beginning. That marks the beginning uh, of the journey. That marks the beginning of the journey. It is not the end. So we are, we are talking about spiritual growth. So whatever is born has to grow. Whatever is born must grow. We need to know that. And uh, let me submit this to you. Spiritual growth is not by accident. Please take note of that. Spiritual growth is not by accident. Just like a baby will not just grow on, on, his, on, on its own. A baby born will not grow on its own. No, it takes our, our decisive effort our deliberate efforts to have schedules where we know the baby is going to feed at this such and such a time where we have to attend to what needs to be attended to in order to see uh, a healthy uh, baby growing. This is also applicable to our spiritual journey. You will not just experience a healthy spiritual life uh, when you're doing nothing, when you're sitting, when you're just careless about everything. Listen, you have to take care of your spiritual life. You have to do what it takes to, for you to see yourself growing. It's an investment. Spiritual growth is an investment. So I usually say you need to daily invest in your spiritual 
uh, growth. You need to daily invest in your spiritual life in general. You need to invest just like we fend for our physical needs. Just like we're so particular about our physical needs. We, 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 we take care of our, ourselves with bath and uh, we clean ourselves. We brush our teeth, our teeth and uh, we, we, we eat. We eat and we drink water. All those things are meant to keep us healthy, to keep us uh, in good condition. The same is true. I mean, your spiritual life needs to be kept in good condition. That means you also need to cleanse yourself spiritually by the word of God. You need to feed yourself by the word of God. I'm going to also read as we are talking uh, about spiritual growth. We are still uh, reinforcing uh, the fact that there is need to grow. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, I'm going to read from 6 and 7, verses 6 and 7. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him. So take note of that. You have received uh, Christ Jesus, walk in him. So when you receive him, we discussed the Romans chapter 10 last, last time in, in the last session. And we said when you receive Jesus, yeah, that is the beginning. Here the Bible is saying, as you have received him, walk in him. Suddenly receiving him marks the beginning of a journey. Receiving him marks the beginning of a journey in Christ. I have received him, I have to walk in him. Verse 7 says, rooted and built up in him. Very important. Rooted and built up. Rooted and built up. It's important to build roots, to develop roots. A tree that just grows without roots it will not go anywhere because when the wind comes, it will be blown off and it will fall. So what makes the tree to stand all the harsh weather elements, the wind, the what, is the roots that it develops. The purpose of the roots uh, are multi, it has got multi purposes. The root is there to bring balance to the tree. The roots are there to bring uh, nutrients to the tree. So the same thing here the Bible is talking, he says, be rooted and built up. We need to be rooted and built up in him. This is uh, all of, this is spiritual growth here being discussed. Spiritual growth is about being rooted in Jesus. It's about being rooted in Christ, being rooted in God's word and being built in him. When you are rooted, there are things that you know uh, will never happen to you. You will never be easily uh, pushed uh, to and fro. You will never be pushed, uh, be shoved to and fro. I mean, you are strong, you are solid, you are stable because you've got roots. If a tree has got roots, it can move sideways, but it will still come back and maintain its position. That is the same thing that happens when you are rooted. So we develop these roots in the Lord as we are uh, pursuing spiritual growth. Pursuing spiritual growth is uh, is, is also to do with the uh, building our our roots in him and being built in him is established in faith as you have been taught abounding there in thanksgiving established in faith you need to be established in faith in faith faith these are the things when you grow in faith you are growing spiritually growing spiritually means growing in faith means growing uh in love growing in wisdom all these things uh they add up to what we call spiritual growth all right let us go let us go because it's a teaching it's a teaching, okay. So this this shows you that it's a journey. This shows you that it's a journey. You need to be rooted. When you are rooted, you cannot be moved. You cannot. You see what happens is when you are not rooted, a little test, a little test, a little test that comes, it will push you away. A little test, it will stop you. Many received Jesus, but they did not develop roots. When tests and trials come, they were they they fell uh, wayside. They fell. They fell, and uh, they never. Are recovered is because they failed to develop roots. I want to encourage you develop roots, develop roots in the Lord, develop roots. We are going to, to look at it closely. How can somebody develop roots and be established? We're going to look at it closely, but it's important for one to develop roots. I want to show you something as we continue to, to discuss this issue of spiritual growth. Uh, come with me to the book of uh, uh, Ephesians. Ephesians, I'm just also trying to to give you more information more scriptures as we are going to uh to move deeper into the subject okay ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 here it says here uh and he gave some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers beautiful 12 it says for the perfecting of the saints for the work of mean of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ take note of those things why are, did god give these 
uh, they are so they, they are called fivefold ministries or five mi uh, ministry gifts. That is the apostle, the prophet, uh, the teacher, evangelist, pastor. Uh, they are given for the perfecting of the saints. Take note of the word perfecting. That word perfecting does not mean perfectionism. It's not referring to perfectionism. It's referring to maturity. The, 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 the word there is maturity for the maturing of the saints. And I want you to see it's saying perfecting to show you that it's a process. Spiritual growth cannot be accomplished, attained in one, in, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, you know, one night. It cannot be attained overnight, let me say. It cannot be attained overnight. This is a journey. This is a process. That's why the Bible says for the perfecting or for the maturing. That means it's a process. It's a, something that we have to commit ourselves to. It's our daily devotion so that we can grow spiritually. You will not grow spiritually if you are not committed to it. You will not grow spiritually if you don't have a strategy. You have to have strategy for growth. You need to have strategy for growth. Do you have a strategy for growth? Growth is not going to happen on its own. You will not just wake up and you are grown. You will not just wake up and you are spiritually established. You need to, to, to have devotion. There is a part that you have to play. Remember when I taught you last time, I said uh, I was emphasizing on waking out your salvation. Waking out your salvation with fear and trembling. And that salvation, I called it devotional salvation. That has to do with the salvation of our souls, salvation of our soul, the bringing to subjection of our body to the will of God. Okay, it says for the perfecting, that means the maturing of the saints. That's the work of these ministries. The pastors, the pastor's job is to mature the saints, the evangelist, the teacher to mature the saints for the work of ministry. May work of ministry is not referring to these uh, to the five gifts now the five office gifts when it says work of ministry it's referring to every believer every believer must do the work of ministry ministry is very wide it is not only limited to uh but